ball, nothing else. So after the turnover by the Penguins, Jim Donnan's team hands it right back. David Birch, the recovery, senior from Syracuse, New York. Coach Kessel first knew of David when he was an assistant under Dick McPherson at Syracuse University. Smith to the 30 for a gain of three on first down. Shannon King again made the tackle. When I talked with David Birch yesterday, he told me he was going to do a couple of big things in the ball game. He promised me that, and uh, so he's delivered on one promise already. He's a 50-year senior, criminal justice major. And yesterday, he's interested in being a probation officer when he leaves Youngstown State. He certainly marshaled his forces for that one, didn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 21 runs, only four passes for the Penguins. Second and seven. Smith upended by William King. And he's about a yard short of the first down. He went about three yards in the air and landed a yard short. Kind of interesting what happened there. Watch the motion come across. They're trying to loosen up uh, William King, number three, from his uh, outside linebacking position. You see him at the bottom of your screen. Start out with the motion, man, then come back in and watch this play here. Just takes Smith's legs out from underneath of him. Landed at the 36, a yard short of a first down. 10-10 left in the first half. 17-0 Youngstown State. And the Penguins facing third and one. They have too many men on the field. Darnell Clark just scurried off. Fullhouse backfield. And the first down picked up by the Penguins. Tamron Smith up the middle. He's the all-time leading rusher at Youngstown State. And it isn't even close. Tamron came into today's game with 4,757 career rushing yards. More than 1,100 more than anybody else in school history. He's had 3,000 yard rushing seasons in a row. He can make it 53 touchdowns with his TD today. And he's heading toward 100 yard game number 22. Those are some outstanding numbers. A lot of hard work for the 217 pound running back. Running play and Smith took Shannon King for a ride. Tamron has two children, he told us yesterday, and he mm -hmm. wants us to say hello to young Tamron, who's three years old, and Tian, a one year old daughter. He's running for some business. <laughs> hey, you know what's interesting? A simple play like the last one they just ran, Sean. Uh, watch that offensive line just keep moving and mashing it. The net effect of that over the course of a ball game is the fourth quarter, suddenly you find your defense just gas. They cannot stay in there against those 300 pounders. Second and five. A light drizzle has returned to Marshall University Stadium. Purdue slips down as he tried to cut along the hash mark. Went down for a loss back to the 41. It was William King in the neighborhood. I know you like baseball. I thought you were going to say he's safe at second. He was <laughs> safe at the 41-yard line. Was Charles <laughs> Purdue. He's a speedster, 10-5 in the 100 meters. And the rain gear is out. There have been a lot of games that in inclement weather have each of these two teams this year. Jim Dunn saying that the uh, passing game of Marshall is not really negatively affected by uh, the inclement weather. They can go ahead and keep flinging the football. He says, as long as you keep the ball dry, we're in good shape. And Marshall still has hope, even if the rain continues. Third down and seven. Nearing eight minutes remaining in the first half. 17-0 Youngstown State. They blitzed, and it's incomplete. Could have been caught. It went right through the hands of Trent Boykin. And right past Jaron Reynolds, number six in the secondary. There was a flag on the play. Dead ball foul. Delay game, offense, five-yard penalty. That's really a break for Youngstown State. Now we'll have another chance at the third down conversion. Can't turn those down. It would have been the first incompletion for Brungard. He's four for four. So far, Youngstown State has 11 first downs. They've all been by the run. Third down and 12. Run 
Bogart slipped on a handoff, and Smith is stopped at the 35-yard line. Mark Rungard, watch him try to pull out and the, the turf gets here. It looks like somebody stepped on his foot. His guard, maybe Gerber, number 62, stepped on his foot. Quarterback's got to move those dogs because the boys up front have to get to work. There was a fumble on the play. Smith was able to gather it back in after the missed handoff. Good punt by Wilkins. Fair catch made by Martin at the 20-yard line. 46-yard punt for Jeff Wilkins. And will return to Huntington, West Virginia right after this. State is 7-0. and oh. Marshall is 5-0. and oh. So, Sean, something's got to give. Let's go back upstairs. Maybe we get Jim a hat. <laughs> He's going to feel like a penguin before the day is <laughs> over. Todd Donnan and the Marshall offense on the field. Youngstown State leads 17 to nothing. Her from its own 19 and Donnan's pass incomplete. He was pressured on a safety blitz by Andre Mason. And uh, Mason was uh, flying directly in his face and in the path of the football. Donnan three for six passing to this point. He's the only son of Jim Donnan, the head coach, and his wife, Mary. Todd has two sisters. The rest of the family stayed behind in Norman, Oklahoma. When Coach Donnan came from the Sooners as an assistant to be the head coach at Marshall, Jim Donnan was here in Huntington living in a hotel for 17 months so that Todd could finish his senior year in Norman. That pass is too high and incomplete. Intended for Tim Martin, Reggie Brown had good coverage. Now we test, uh, you see a test for the uh, secondary of uh, Youngstown State. It is an experienced secondary, even though they lost a couple of ballplayers from last year's team. Third and ten. Seven minutes remaining in the second quarter. The herd one for four on third down. Plenty of time this time, and Donnan's pass is on target. Tim Martin has a first down. Out at the 38, Lester Weaver made the tackle. That's a gain of 19. Tim Martin does a, a smart thing for a receiver. He finds a little area in the, in the zone. They're playing a three-deep zone. He settles down in the crease in between the linebackers and the deep people and makes the reception. He's a redshirt freshman from Saudi Daisy, Tennessee. And watch here as the linebackers go into their drops, okay? Now, see that area in between the, the deep people? Right there, that's where Martin comes in and makes the catch on a little slant. Penguins are showing blitz and then backed off, and Parker crossed the 40. He's down at the 41 after a pickup of three. Chris, a sophomore from Lynchburg, Virginia, out of Heritage High School. Came in averaging better than five yards per carry. Today for Parker, six rushes for a total of five yards and the lost fumble. And credit the defense of Youngstown State for doing an excellent job. Show you on a couple of plays here what they're doing differently than Marshall was at the beginning of the ball game and why Youngstown had you know, so much success running against them early on. Play action pass for Donnan. And it is caught in Penguin territory. Ricky Carter stopped at the 43 by Lester Weaver. 16 more for the Thundering Herd. Interesting to see them bite on play action because the run game really hasn't been a factor for Marshall so far in the ball game. And this is just a nice pass. He had to put it up a little bit high, but uh, Todd Dunnan did, but uh, he still was able to get it down to his receiver, Ricky Carter. You call him Little Ricky. There's another Ricky Carter who's a defensive lineman on the Marshall team. Little Ricky's 5'10", 160 pounds. More contact stadium security. Chris Selfo, the offensive coordinator, said yesterday they need Ricky Carter to make some big plays. He had a chance to make another and drop the wide receiver screen. It's incomplete. That's what happens when you're trying to make big plays. You're looking for that area to run downfield. Take your eye off the football. Of course, the herd lost Troy Brown off last year's 
national championship team. He's now playing for Coach Donnan's good friend Bill Parcells with the New England Patriots. They're on a win streak, aren't they? The Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> they got two this season. It's been tough they on Bill up too. He's an excellent football coach. They've been close several times. Second and ten. 17 nothing. Youngstown State. We're in the second quarter. Donnan runs out of time and runs out of room. Alfred Jethro will be credited with the sack, but give credit to the coverage because Donnan had plenty of time. He sure did, and he had a couple of open receivers on that one. Uh, Ricky Carter was just sitting right in the middle of the field, and Todd had just dumped it off. Watch uh, right down the middle of the field. You're going to see 23 Ricky Carter just waiting for the football. Now the linebackers are behind him. Zip that ball right there. You got the first down. Those linebackers are five or six yards in back of him. You can complete that pass for the first. There's little Ricky. And there's it's big Ricky. Big Ricky. <laughs> Big Ricky, 6'2", 265. Donnan again with lots of time. Intercepted by Leon Jones. And he rumbled into the territory of the thundering herd at the 46-yard line. Team high fifth interception of the year for Jones. And he brought it back 22. Talk about laying in the weeds. This time, Todd Dunn is trying to go back to little Ricky and... Watch number 50 on the left side of the screen. Float back into his zone area and never takes his eyes off the football. Reacting only to the football. Really didn't even look for the receiver. Just went right for the ball. Beautiful interception and return. Todd down and a look at what he was checking out downfield and he lets this ball go. He knows he's in trouble. And again, it appeared he had open receivers, Dan, and picked the wrong guy. The Penguins back on offense with a 17-0 lead when we come back. Texas Tech battles Oklahoma. The John Hancock Bowl Christmas Eve on CBS. So, you're buying a new car. Well, before you spend all that money, why not make a free call? 1-800-LSS-WINS. When you do, we'll send you a free video showing how well the Oldsmobile 88 LSS luxury sedan stacks up against cars costing thousands more. It's your money, but fortunately, it's also a free call. Getting bored with just plain nuts? Introducing new Fisher favorite tropical fruit and nut mix, a more exciting flavor combination. Pineapple, papaya, sweet cream almonds, and whole cashews. Crunchy nuts with juicy real fruit. New Fisher Favorites Tropical Fruit and Nut Mix. The newest Fisher Favorite. It's Fisher flavor or it's just plain nuts. Braun Flex Control. The first electric shaver with a pivoting head. Flex Control automatically adjusts to every contour of your face. Under the chin, under the lip, that tricky spot under your nose. You'll get the closest brawn shave yet. Flex Control from Braun. The last word in shavers. Sean McDonough with Dan Jiggetts and Jim Gray, our producer Lance Barrow, our director Kathy Barreto. Delighted to have you with us for the Division I AA Football National Championship game from Huntington, West Virginia. The Youngstown State Penguins looking for their second title in three years. Lead 17 to nothing with 4.28 left in the first half. And another bruising run for Tamron Smith as he took William King for a ride inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line, about two yards short of a first down. 74 yards rushing now on 15 carries for Smith. You might be wondering what is the difference between Division I AA and 1A football. And the biggest difference is the number of scholarships the schools are allowed to hand out. At this level, 65 full scholarships. Division 1A, 88 full rides for football. Smith popped short of a first down by Byron Turner. There's a late flag thrown into the pile. Billy Lyon was also in on the play. 